Welcome back to Black Enterprise Business Report. With the presidential election right around the corner, one of the hottest topics is tax cuts. Both Barack Obama and John McCain claim they will lower taxes while the other will raise them. But whose plan will benefit you? How much are the tax breaks and when will you see the green? Joining us to clear up all the confusion is financial expert and president of Optimum Capital Management, Ryan Mack, and BlackEnterprise.com editor-in-chief, Alfred Edmund Jr. I want to thank both of you for joining us. And we're going to discuss both McCain and Obama. We're not picking any preference here, but okay. we're going to start with McCain's camp. Now, mm -hmm. there is advocates who say that he is giving a lot of misinformation about Barack Obama's tax plan. So can you help us sift through what is myth and what is fact? Well, well first of all, Barack Obama will not raise taxes on the middle class. They firmly have stated in the many times, McCain, that he will raise taxes on the middle class. He will not. If you're making over $250,000 a year, first of all, he'll give you a 2% Social Security tax. He will roll back the, the George Bush tax cuts that he implemented during his administration. And Barack Obama also wants to raise the mar top marginal tax rates to 39%. If you're earning $150,000 a year or less, you'll get a $500 tax cut if you're an individual. If you're earning between $8,000 and $75,000 a year and you're a working family, you'll get a $1,000 tax cut. Truth to be told, as according to TaxPolicyCenter.org, Barack Obama's plan will give four times an average savings for those for 80 percent of the country than, Barack, than John McCain's plan. And by contrast, if you're making more than five million dollars in total net worth, or making more than two hundred thousand dollars a year, then you're going to lean toward McCain, mm -hmm. who wants to maintain the Bush tax cuts, who wants to increase the estate uh, planning tax, uh, the estate tax ceiling. Um, now, but how many Americans, particularly in the current economic environment, exactly. are pulling in $200,000 or more and have more than a $5 million net worth? It's a very good point that you make about 200000 because $200,000 for a family of four, five, or six is not a lot of money, especially when your housing costs are so expensive. Mm -hmm. I think really that swath in the middle is where that makes um, a big difference. Well, that's the battleground. There's this, mm -hmm. this battle over defining the middle class exactly. and then trying to capture that territory. But again, when you talk about a net worth of $5 million, there are a lot of people in the upper middle class who can't claim that kind of wealth. And I think the important thing we have to look at here is how are we going to pay for these tax cuts? Absolutely. And even Greenspan came out and stated that John McCain's tax plan was not fiscally responsible. If you look at the two tax plans and how much they're going to cost the U.S. economy, John McCain's plan is going to cost the U.S. about $4.2 trillion. Barack Obama is going to cost about $2.9 trillion. Greenspan said that John McCain is essentially giving tax cuts with borrowed funds, where, and he has no plan on paying. He said he'll re reduce earmark spending, he'll reduce pork barrel spending, but he doesn't give real any specifics in terms of how he's going to pay for the plan. Barack Obama, on the other hand, says, I'm going to roll back the George Bush tax cuts, one, that we shouldn't have gotten in the first place. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and secondly, we're going to pull these people out of Iraq, and we're spending $10 billion a month, and we're going to do what John McCain See, said. Yes, we go, got to look at the current here. economic yeah. environment. We're talking about, on the McCain plan, building already on a record deficit. Exactly. And dealing with the spending that he intends to continue, at least for the foreseeable future, on the war in Iraq and, of course, our, our needs in Afghanistan and other parts of the country, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the world, rather. Well, let me ask you this. Obama's plan, I think, from both of you, that you, I get the, the picture that you think it's going to be good for the middle class and certainly for those who are under that. Yes. But what about investment and investors and high-income wealth families who make over 200000 Well, I want to quote um, one of my favorite philosophers, Charles Barkley, who says, okay. yeah, I'll take a bigger hit, but I can afford it. Mm -hmm. So this goes to what's best for the entire country. Um, and, and I think you got to look at, in the current economic environment, in the cur current global environment, what is the most responsible thing to do for the health, of the economic health of the entire country? And the fact of the matter is people who are at the higher ends of the income brackets can absorb more of the load in terms of keeping the company going, country going economically. And let's also remember what has what's been happening over the past eight years. You know, John, George Bush inherited a $287 billion surplus. Now we have a trade deficit of about $350 billion, forecasted by 2010. is going to be even larger than that. And John McCain himself voted against the George Bush tax cuts back in 2005. But after that, now we're in even worse situation than we are before. So we have all these things that are happening that indicate that we have a worse economic conditions now. So we cannot afford these tax cuts. The U.S. economy is not an endless barrel yeah, of money. This is not a matter of what's best for Obama or what's best for McCain. It's about mm -hmm. what's best economically and financially for the health of the country. And it's important to note, nobody's against companies making a lot of money. 
but you're making a lot of money as part of a national community and a global community, and in this case, a national economy. You know, Walmart is not going to make money if people don't have money to spend Absolutely. at Walmart. And so if you really look at, in terms of what John McCain is, is proposing, it's nothing really different than what we've heard eight years ago when George Bush ran as a reformer, ran on cutting taxes, ran on trying to curtail spending. That's the GOP platform. But we've seen where that got us. And more it's than no, once. Yeah, more than once. <laughs> and, and it's no difference in terms of his policy issues. You ask John McCain, what are you going to do differently than what George Bush has done for the past eight years? He gives you no substantial differences in terms of concrete policy issues. Okay. Well, I tell you what. You both have a lot of opinions. Um, I, I think that it was good. It's good to have this dialogue, and it certainly should continue. I think uh, the great advice for all of us is to dig, 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 and get in the meat of the issues. I want to thank both of you, both you, Ryan, as well as you, Alfred. We appreciate your time. Thank and you. If you'd like a more in-depth look at both candidates' platforms, please check out our website at blackenterprise.com and click on the Politics tab. Still to come, our Entrepreneur of the Week makes sharing profitable. We'll be right back.